Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Lay's Path, Violet Memoir. So the last place we left off, we had gotten back to the hospital scene, and this time we're going down Lee's route. So this should be rather interesting. I'm curious to see what kind of skeletons Lee has in his closet, definitely concerning his dad and his family. So anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy the maintaining for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right in. Alarm you're up, and let's go. All right, <clears throat> all right. Ooh, excuse me. Shoving it in my pocket, I bring my focus back on getting out of wherever the hell I am. Creeping my way down the hallway, the desolate hospital refuses to acknowledge my presence. There's no sound other than the light clacking of my claws against the tiled floor. Nothing moves, nothing makes a sound, and that makes it so much worse. It's like there's something standing behind me, waiting for me to turn around. After a minute of nothing happening, I slowly move into a more casual walk. I can't release any of the tension in my body, but walking at a snail's pace isn't going to get me out of here faster. The sterile scent of the air feels suffocating and inescapable, like it's going to be burned into my nose. I just need to get out of here or find the others. I have anything but being alone here. Speaking of the others, I really hope they're all okay. There's a part of me that feels guilty because it feels guilty because more than anyone else, my mind drifts to Lee. Maybe it's just because he's always taking care of me or just because he helps make me feel safe, but I hope we can meet up again soon and hope that he's okay. The memory of that scar across his stomach is still fresh. I don't know what happened to him, but it's clear he's been through a lot already. I don't want him to suffer anymore. Looking towards one of the posters on the wall is a bruised possum child crying. I can't even focus on the words because the thought of Lee being just like that kid, being hurt with no one to help him like he's always, with no one to help him like he always helps us. The thought, the thought of it feels like it's strangling me, restricting my ability to breathe. If someone as stable as Lee can be in danger, what about me? What about the others? He'll be okay. He's probably more worried about you than himself. My shaky voice is barely above a whisper, and it does nothing to improve my anxious breathing or booming sound of my heartbeat in my ear. I'm so lost in my thoughts that I'm not paying attention to where I'm walking, and the, mo and the moment my foot touches something that isn't the cold floor, my fur prickles into needles and I let out a yelp, borderline scream. I'm not sure if it's the raw fear empowering me, but I swear I jumped at least four feet in the air. On the floor, another little pamphlet lies, but my attention is focused around it because the surrounding area looks much dirtier, and for a split second, it looks like it's spreading. Staring at it longer, it's very clearly not moving, but there's a sinking feeling in my stomach that if I look away from if I look away from it, then it will grow and continue the and consume the rest of the floor like a festering infection. And despite the ominous circumstances, my curiosity gets the better of me, and I pick up the folded paper. Reading what's written inside, it causes the rest of the hospital to fall away, and that hideous feeling of dread swells with greater force within me. This is all your fault, Wally. Why do you always ruin everything? My hands begin to shake, and the piece of paper falls slowly to the ground. The world is spinning around me, and it's like time is slowing down and speeding up at the same time. Before I know it, I'm on my hands and knees, my head hanging towards the floor. The only sound I can hear is uneven heaves of my breathing and the skin crawling, cracking of my claws digging into the leno below. I can't do this. Not again. I can smell the beach in the distance, and I'm not even sure if it's real or just my head fucking with me again. Then just as suddenly, there's a hand on my back. It's warm and soft, rubbing in long strokes. It's like a lighthouse in the middle of a stormy night. Pushing everything out of my head as much as possible, I focus onto that hand, that sweet beacon. With only the sound of my rapid breathing and the light scratching of claws through fur, I'm able to push everything out of my mind and just exist for a moment. These few seconds feel like an eternity, but eventually my breathing slows. It's still at a faster pattern than usual, but I'm able to finally move my body, if slowly. Looking up towards my savior, it's both unsurprising and somehow the biggest relief I've ever experienced. <laughs> Lily! Hey, you doing okay? You look like you were having some trouble. She gives me a soft smile that reaches that reaches her eyes, which are filled with concern and extremely exhausted. I can't imagine this has been any easier on her, but she managed to push that aside for me. I'm fine, I swear. Just needed a moment to, um... You don't have to make up an excuse. It's okay to need help. You don't gotta be ashamed of it. I know, it's just embarrassing. You have nothing to be embarrassed of, especially around me. I can feel my ears burning, but there's a swell of happiness within my chest. I can't believe I have friends who care about me as much as she does. I wonder what Marcus would think of me now. 
Throughout all this, she never stops brushing her fingers through my head fur. I can tell I can tell she wants to ask what's wrong, but surprisingly, she's showing a lot of restraint. I think I'm good. You sure? We don't have to go yet. In fact, I'd rather see as little of this place as possible. Not a fan of hospitals? Her face scrunches up in disgust, and it's very clear it's much more than that. It's much more than just a simple dislike, but when she catches me looking at her curiosity, she, she wipes it off her face and brings back that reassuring smile. It's certainly not my favorite of places, you can say that. Now come on, let's find the others and get out of here. Her hand leaves my head, and I feel an immediate yearning for it to return. That comforting touch. It's not something I've had in a long time, but maybe I can ask her to try it for me later. Though, by the way, Lee comforted me at the stairwell yesterday. I think he'll be fine with doing it, too. He's probably done his fair share of it with Charlie. I really hope he's okay. Taking her hand, I'm surprised by how easily she's able to pull me up. This music I'm going to lower, because I think it's probably copyrighted. Okay. Taking her hand, I'm surprised by how easily she's able to pull me up. She's the same size as I am, but she pulls me up like it's nothing. Whoa! My dad's a self-defense trainer, ex-military CQC stuff. I can kick any guy's ass, don't you worry. She preens at that and puffs out her chest in a way that reminds me a lot of Oscar. She's got a massive grin on her face like him too, though. Like him too, though, her tired, sunken eyes are a grim reminder of how serious their situation is. She quickly drops the act, realizing this probably isn't the time for that before she waves me towards her. Expecting to continue down the hall like I had been, Lily walks past me and indicates for me to follow her. I came from that way. There's nothing much, There's nothing but a bunch of locked doors, even the stairwell. Do you think there's maybe a key in one of these rooms? Have you tried opening any of them? <laughs> Not really. I was just hoping to find some stairs and get out. Walking towards one of the doors, she tilts her head and waits. The look of amusement in her eyes and the way her ears lean towards me makes me feel a bit silly, but I take a step forward regardless and pull on one of the doors. It doesn't budge at all. There's never the sound of... There's never the sound of the door struggling against the lock. It's like it can never be opened to begin with. What the... Lily doesn't look surprised at all, and there's a small resurgence of panic in my chest. It must have shown on my face because she places her hand on my shoulder in reassurance. Hey, it's okay. Not all the doors are locked. I found one that leads to this hallway. We're fine. We just have to find a way out. But this door, it doesn't. It didn't even rattle or anything. Yeah, I don't think the, these doors they even lead anywhere. I tried kicking one down, but it was like I was hitting a wall. I didn't even hear any echoing on the other side. Where are we? No hospitals like this. I don't think that matters right now. Let's just keep moving. Yeah, okay. <sighs> oh, sorry about that, guys. A little bit of extra content there for you. Does your phone work? Mine's out of battery. Uh, no, it doesn't. I fully charged it this morning, but it's not turning on. Don't worry, I'm sure it's just flat after we got knocked out for so long. I'm not sure if that's better or worse. That means we've been here for a while. Hmm. Returning back to the room I woke up in, Lily peeks into the peeks into before Lily peeks into before taking a few steps in. She looks around for something before looking confused. Returning back okay, looking confused. Why is this one unlocked? Oh, um, I woke up here. You woke up in a room? I only woke up in the hallway on the gross floor. There's a temptation to mention how I've been on the floor as well, but I don't think now is really the time for semantics. What's this? Lily points towards a piece of paper on the ground where I had been lying. Did I miss it when I searched the room before? I swore there wasn't anything there, but maybe I missed it. As she picks it up, I feel a familiar sense of dread. What if it's another message directed towards him? What if it's... Sorry, guys, I'm, uh, kind of going through some stuff right now. Um, those of you who follow me on Twitter are gonna know, gonna know what's up with me, but, you know, I'm just going through some emotional stuff right now, so I, I may occasionally get choked up during, you know, visual novels like this, because they can bring out some of that emotion in me. Okay, anyway, alright. She turns it over, and, and it's just a small photo of some blue flowers sitting in a thin glass face. Below the photo, written on a blank space, is the words... Where you? Where have you been? It's very beautiful and nothing like the taunting message I received. But Lily's gone silent with a somber expression on her face. It's subtle and she's able to keep her ears from drooping, but that smile she wears turns a darker shade of bittersweet. Are you okay? Looking towards me, she gives me a slow nod before putting the photo on the nearby desk. It stands out amongst the piles of pamphlets. Yeah, I'm good. It's nothing. It just reminded me of something I haven't done in a while. 
I'm about to ask her for more details when she motions towards the door, I'm moving and waiting b beside it for me to follow. Let's go find the others. I bet Lucas is freaking out. I should ask her what's wrong, but I don't think now's the time. We should be focused on finding the others. So I nod and follow her out and down the hallway, checking doors as we pass them for any give. No luck so far. After what feels like ten minutes of walking down numerous corridors, we reach a stairwell that makes me excited to finally have anything other than just endless white hallways with the same fake doors. Looks like we're finally getting somewhere. Lily had quickly gotten back to her cheerful self. I can't understand how she's so calm and composed at the moment, let alone smiling. I feel like I'm two steps away from a panic attack. Things are going to be fine. Don't worry. She must have sensed my thoughts because she's now resting her hand on my shoulder and giving me that sweet, concerned smile. Yeah. Okay, everything will be okay. No need to worry. I'm trying my best, I give her a very shaky smile. It's not very convincing, but she plays along regardless, pulling away and gesturing to the stairs. There we go. Hopefully these lead somewhere. At the bottom of the stairs, we're confronted by three different hallways. By the signs above them, they each lead to a different, a different department. The left hallway leads to the physical rehabilitation therapy department. I never even, I've never even broken a bone, let alone had to have physical therapy. That sounds terrifying. I'm distinctly reminded of Lee's limp. It's something that always catches my attention, but I haven't really put a lot of thought into it. Was it a serious enough injury to need physical therapy? I wonder if he'll tell me if I ask her, is that too, prof is that too personal? Shaking the thoughts out of my head, I focus on the next corridor. The hallway, direct, the hallway directly opposite them leads towards the emergency room. That place surely has an exit, right? The patients need access to it from the outside. The final hallway on the right looks to head towards the Speech and Languages Services Department. That's new to me. I've never heard of this area before. It's an area for helping those with communication, communication problems, like if you need to improve your speech skills or have some kind of restriction. Oscar mentioned having a friend with mutism. I'm sure he's gone through speech and language therapy. Lily must have caught my confusion because she clarifies it quickly. I'm not sure I completely understand, but I get the gist of it. I don't really know anything about hospitals, but I I've never had to go in one before. It's just something I've learned. I've visited every winter hospital a fair share. Any reason what? The layout of this place doesn't seem to make a lot of sense, but then again, I don't think a lot of this does. Best to just roll with it. She cuts me off and replies with a jokey tone, but it's clear that it's a topic she doesn't want to she doesn't want me to pry into. I don't think Lily would ever get angry at me for asking, but I don't want to push her boundaries regardless. Returning my focus to the situation, I turn towards Lily, and I can't stop myself from wringing my hands. My entire fur coat must be standing on end with how tense I am. Uh, which way do we go? The ER will definitely have a way out. It's an interest for people needing an emergency after all, but we might want to look around to see if we can find the others. Looking around curiously, I walk towards the hallway leading to the Physical Rehabilitation Therapy Department. I can't stop the thought that about Lee's limp from creeping back into my head, and I take a few steps into the hallway just to get a look. It might be an area he gravitates towards, but he's familiar with it. Oh! As soon as I step into the corridor, there's a slamming, there's a slamming behind me followed by a panicked yell from Lily, and I can't stop myself from almost tripping over as I try to spin around. Behind me, where the doorway to the hallway used to be, is a set of large metal bars blocking the exit. It looks like once you'd seen a jail cell. Wallace, are you alright? What happened? I don't know. The bars just fell from the top door. Top of the door. She's speaking quickly, but I can tell she's trying to keep her cool. In fact, it looks like she's managing to calm herself down rather well. I wish I could have that kind of self-control, because right now I can feel my heart racing within my chest and my breathing accelerating to a fever pitch. Reaching up to the bars, they're cool against the pads of my fingertips. A quick tap of my, with my claws confirms they're real and definitely metal. Gripping the bars, I give a half-hearted tug to see if there's any give at all, but quickly stop once I know it's not going anywhere. My upper body strength is weak, uh, is weak as it is. I can't move or bend metal bars. Lily, on the other hand, gives a much more enthusiastic attempt and pulls with all her might. I can see the muscles on her arms tensing and the veins pushing the fur on her neck. Eventually, she too gives up, and with an annoyed grunt, with an annoyed grunt, but if there's one slit, but if there's one silver lining, at least now I know she can easily beat me in a fight. I don't think this thing's budging. Sorry. What do we do? Should we wait for help or what? I think it's best we split up here. You go deeper inside. Maybe you'll find someone or another way out, and I'll go down another hallway. Maybe we can meet up along the way. The thought of leaving Lily is terrifying. It takes an enormous amount of strength to not burst out in tears right now. But what if you get locked in too? It doesn't look like there's any keyholes, so I don't think we've. I don't think we've. So I don't think we've. I don't think we're going to get this open. I doubt we're coming back through here. 
I want to argue more, but there's nothing else I can add because she's right. Unless we find some mechanism that opens this, there's no way I can make it back. It, make it back, but, but, but I'm scared. I don't even have to say anything because Lily must see the fear written all over my face. She approaches the locked door and cups my face before whispering in a calming tone, "Hey, hey, you're okay. You can do this, Wallace. I know you can." All I'm able to do is give her a silent nod. I'm not sure I believe her, but I'll try my best to live up to her expectations. Good. It's just a temporary split-up. Catch up with you later. She gives me a wave before disappearing down the speech and language services hallway, not giving me any chance to speak. It doesn't feel rude, but more that I, but more that her trust in me is absolute. It's reassuring in a strange roundabout way. Letting go of the bars, I take a couple hesitant steps further into the hallway while keenly looking for anything out of the ordinary. It's strange. I had been alone when I first woke up, but somehow being alone again after meeting up with someone is worse than before. It's like a fire. It's like a fire was ripped from me, or that it feels even colder now. Creeping down the hallway, the atmosphere here feels different from the previous areas we explored. While the rest felt sterile and lifeless, this one feels very lived in and worn down. There's nothing explicit I can point to, but there's something about the colorization of the tiles that makes this entire place feel less clean. The first thing I notice is the lack of doors. It's not like there aren't any around, but it feels like there's a lot less than the area that I want to, less than the area I woke up in. I guess since this is more of a specialized area, it has less rooms. <sighs> the only thing that stands out is the lack of a distinct of that distinct of that distinct sterile sterile smell that medical centers have. Instead, there's a more earthy smell in the air, a musky scent that reminds me of the old books or closets. It might sound insane considering the circumstances, but it's actually calming. It's familiar, but that just makes me that just makes the pit of my stomach heavier because nothing feels right. Nothing makes sense. And making it to the first door, I try to open this one, but the lock, but like the doors in the previous hallways, it doesn't budge at all. Giving a sigh, I look through the long vertical window on the door to see what's inside. It's a quaint little checkup room. Nothing like what you'd expect for physical therapy, especially with the cramped space. I must not be in the department yet, and still in the wards or general checkups. I don't know what department I woke I awoke in, but from the looks of it, it just seems like some wards for patients to rest and be inspected by doctors. I haven't really visited hospitals much, but I'm pretty sure this isn't how this isn't how a hospital is supposed to be. It feels like a fake hospital, which sounds insane considering nothing here makes sense. It's just the weird circumstances, but the layout of this place doesn't feel real either. It's like I'm walking through a movie set. And then something moves outside the window on the other side of the room. It's hard to see due to the distance, but I can see what looks like a large figure on the other side. Uh, it must be on the ground floor. If that leads outside, then we must be close to an exit somewhere, right? I'm not able to make out any details of the figure other than a vague silhouette. They're large and bulky. Their body looks similar to Oscar's, and I can't help but feel a surge of excitement at reuniting with someone else again. With renewed energy, I pull away from the hallway and walk down the hall at a pace that barely contains my blazing desire to get out of there. I guess I just have to keep going to see what I find. Oh. Hello, workout equipment. After what could be anywhere from ten minutes to an hour of walking, I finally reach a large room filled with different kinds of equipment and furniture. It ranged from two long parallel rails to a group of yoga balls piled into the corner. The room looks like it belongs in a gym instead of a hospital. You can get a full workout you can get a full workout here. My immediate thought is that this must be the physical rehabilitation therapy department, and that's confirmed when I see a little sign next to the door indicating this room as such. While the hallways have been progressively growing more worn down, this is the first time I'd call it decrepit. What should have been a polished wooden floor is completely rotting away, looking like termites have infested this entire room. The previously mentioned railing is rusted to the point where I'm worried I might catch something I might catch something if I just run my fingertip my finger pads along them. The room looks like it's not just empty, but has been abandoned to the elements. It's a stark contrast from the rest of the hospital. What happened? How did I'm interrupted by the sound of a distant smashing noise, like something snapping violently, followed by a familiar voice. It's faint but distinct in its deep baritone. Fuck! Shit! The vulgar words barely registered to me as I rushed towards the words. They're coming from the entranceway on the other side of the room. There's no door on it, and it sounds like Lee's voice is coming from the right of the opening. Yeesh. <gasps> possum boy. Almost tripping as I round the corner, I catch the possum leaning down on one knee and, and as he grips his calves. It takes a moment for me to see what's happening, but it looks like Lee's foot is broken through the floorboard and it's stuck underneath. Lee! Are you okay? I quickly rush over to him as he looks up towards me with a surprised expression. It's not very reserved it's not very reserved like his face normally is. I guess that now this isn't that now isn't the time for keeping up a cool facade. 
Wallace, shit, you all right? You ain't hurt, are you? I'm fine, but what about you? What happened? At the confirmation that I'm doing okay, he visibly relaxes and he goes back to tugging his leg like it's just a completely normal thing for him to be doing at the moment. Leg's just stuck. Won't take a moment. Be careful, though. This shithole is falling apart. All right, guys, I'm going to pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching this new episode of Violet Memoir, Lee's Path. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!